we'd like to welcome you to another uh, broadcast of Have Faith in God, a ready uh, video chat here at Abounding Grace Ministries. I'm Pastor Brian Hollins here with Pastor Corey Wilkins and Minister Drake Sanders. And we're uh, talking today about the Holy Spirit. We're teaching today about the Holy Spirit. We're talking today, having a conversation today about the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you will be, um, you'll be blessed. And we pray that you'll go ahead right now and begin to um, invite or, or share or whatever you, you can do with your friends and let them know that we're broadcasting that. We'll be broadcasting for 30 minutes from 7.30. This is Central Time until 8 o'clock. We're going to be talking and teaching on the Holy Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people uh, are afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit, or, or should I say uncomfortable Amen. talking about the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times when we're uncomfortable talking about something, it's because we don't have knowledge. Right, right. The Bible says uh, the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It is not um, because we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable for a reason. It's because there's a lack of knowledge. Amen, amen. I just start off by saying, you know, um, I haven't all my life knew about the Holy Spirit. So I couldn't always, you know, tell you nothing about the Holy Spirit. I knew about Jesus. I knew about God. I kind of knew about the Holy Spirit, but I really couldn't give you anything on it. You know what I'm saying? That, that's for me. You know? yeah. and, and same here. Uh, the Holy Spirit's role in my life now was not made evident until later on in my life. Right. The, the, the way we learned about the Holy Spirit in, in our younger days was not the Holy Spirit as we know it today. Right. Amen. It was Amen. Uh, what people perceived the Holy Spirit to be, which kind of pushed people away because they said, well, if that's the Holy Ghost, I don't know if I want to deal with that right. because that's, that's not something I want to get involved with. Right. Amen. Right. Well, you know, we're going to talk about we, uh, three points. You know, what is the Holy Spirit, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, and um, what I got to do to receive the Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? Well, over the book of John, uh, the 14th chapter of John, the 16th verse, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And uh, so here Jesus is preparing to, uh, to leave, and he's preparing his disciples, and he's letting his disciples know that he's not going to leave them comfortless, right. because Jesus had been their comforter, he had been their provider, he had been their helpmeet, he had been their counselor, he had been uh, everything. He had brought things to their remembrance that he had taught them before. So Jesus is saying to them, you know, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to leave. I, my, my, my purpose is almost completed, right. and, uh, but I'm not going to leave you accomplished. It's important to know that when Jesus was here, uh, the, the disciples were able to do everything right. because Jesus represented the comforter. He represented the presence of God. It was his time here in the earth, in the, in the, in the, in being physical in the earth, and it was his time, and everything that we saw them do, they were able to do it because Jesus was with them. Amen. Amen. And, and I love how when Jesus was explaining, to, explaining this to them, he said, I'm going to send you another right. comforter, Amen. saying that you have one now in yes. me, because I'm here with you. Yes. But I'm going to have to go, so I'm, I can't, because if God's not going to go his word, he has to supply our needs. That's right. So he's going to meet our, if we, if we had Jesus as a comforter, when he leaves, we have to have another comforter that's to take right. his place. So that's the role the Holy Spirit took. Jesus went to heaven, the Holy Spirit came. That's right. Amen. Absolutely. I think about them guys, man. They were just like, hold on, you finna leave us? Yeah. Like, hold on, yeah. what, we, yeah. what we gonna do? Like, yeah. You finna leave us? So like you were saying, you know, he was the comforter there. But, and, and when it says, you know, how uh, over there it says it was to our advantage. That's right. Even right. when he left, he was like, man, it's, gonna, it's to your advantage that I go. That I go. Yeah. Yeah. So when you know, you think about the word advantage and you think about taking advantage and what's to your advantage, that means it's, it's better. Yeah. It's better that he go. You yeah. know, they, at that time, them guys could only see that flesh and Jesus being here as their comforter, man. So they was, they was like, no, nah, we don't want Jesus to leave the scene right now, yeah. you know, but. Right. But he had to go. He had, to, he had go. to go. And he said, he says in uh, John 14, uh, 17, it says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot Amen. receive. Amen. See, the world can't receive right. the Holy Spirit. Right. The, the, the Holy Spirit is not for the world. And that's why the world don't understand the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's why the world talks about the Holy Spirit and laugh at the Holy Spirit, yeah. make fun of the Holy Spirit. And we should understand the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because here in the word it says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. The world does not see him, neither know him. Amen. It is only the believer, the child of God, 
that knows Jesus, that knows the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And and like like you're saying, the world can't receive him, but the child of God can receive him. Yes. Man. We have the yes. capability of receiving the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is believe. But when we do receive the Holy Spirit, it's for us to do the works that Christ did. That's right. Because we can't do any works on our own. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, we, re we, we recognize that uh, when he dipped him and he came back up, the Holy Spirit ascended like That's a dove. Right. That's right. But before that, <laughs> Jesus did no miracles. No miracles at all. Because he wasn't going to do anything outside of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Leader. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. You know, Jesus, and Pastor Corey, that's such a powerful point. You know, when Jesus was baptized and he came up out of the water, you know, a lot of people don't know that Jesus didn't do any miracles prior to being the Holy Spirit falling that's upon right. him. Which means you and I can do no no miracles. Our ministry only starts when the Holy Spirit is up on us. That's right. Your ministry starts. If Jesus couldn't do it, then you and I can't do it. And Jesus showed us that if, if he could do it, then we can do it. That's why it was so important that Jesus sent a comforter, sent the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would come upon us as the Holy Spirit came upon him so that we could do exactly what Jesus had done. He said, greater works you'll do than I did. Well, that, that only happens when we have the Holy Spirit. Right. So when we say, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. It's, and it's not an it, it's a person. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. And the person of the Holy Spirit is a guide, a teacher, one that brings things to our remembrance. Amen. A lot of people want to believe that the Holy Spirit is their conscience or their intuition. Oh, the Holy Spirit is more than your conscience, more than your intuition. Right. The Holy Spirit is the mind of God. Amen. It's the Spirit of God. God said, I am spirit. You must come to me in spirit and in truth. So when we come to God, we come to God by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to see the Holy Spirit like you seeing Jesus walking around. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. sometimes we like to think, well, if Jesus was here walking around, then I would do this or I would live this way. It'd be easy. But, you know, it's better for us. One way that it's better because he can be in every place at one time. We don't, right. have, we don't have to call on Jesus, wait for him to come. You know, he ain't, I mean, he wasn't in no rush to come because he knew what, what was going to be done. That's right. But better than that, we don't have to call on call on him to, to physically come. He lives in, and dwells on the inside of us. Yeah. And and so Jesus is always there on the scene. Every, every Everywhere we go, Jesus is on the scene. And I like over there in, um, over there in James um, when it talks about um, faith without work. I mean, I, 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 I've heard a lot of people, and I got it twisted up back in the day. You know, you think about working and working and working, but that works is the Holy Spirit That's leading right. you. That's right. So when you think about yeah. getting the Holy Spirit, and you think about now, how do I operate? Now the works is you doing something that the Holy Spirit has led you to do. Yeah. So That's basically right. not just you doing a work. You can do a work and it be good. I could give you, you know, $5 yeah. and you be good. But if the Holy Spirit is leading me to only buy you something to eat and don't give you the, the five dollars. See, the Holy Spirit knows that if you get the five dollars in your hand, you may go out and do something else with it. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit only said, buy him something to eat today. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. you thinking the five dollars is good, yeah. but the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. He's our comforter. He's our, you know, our God, our strengthener. Right. So he, he's all-knowing and that faith without works is, is, is I love that verse because yeah. it's being led by yeah. the Spirit and then do. Amen. That's the work that you do. Amen. Praise God. You know, you you know, when the Bible says, when the Bible says the Holy Spirit, you know, no man can say that Jesus is, is Lord without the Holy Spirit. So we know that the Holy Spirit personified is the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of every man, every believer that has said Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, you said that because Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, gave you the, the, the Gave you to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You only know that because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit personified. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that lives on the inside of you. But the Spirit that's up on you in the book of Acts, uh, Acts 1 and 8, it says, but ye shall receive power. Amen. What is the Holy Spirit? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> that you would receive power. Amen. 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 Power. Amen. Power when that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. So the Holy Spirit comes up on us. That's right. The power of the Holy Spirit. There is power. There's power with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a light and it guides us. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit shows us things. Bring things to our remembrance, our standby, our counselor, right. our help me. All of these are roles of the Holy Spirit, our counselor. And you need counseling at times. You That's need right. direction at times. Right. And you need power at times. 
and the Holy Spirit works on the inside of us that gives us it's the spirit of truth. Amen. You know, you, you, you have the word of God on the inside of you. God said, I'm not going to write it on tablets any longer, but I'm going to write it in your mind and in your heart. That's why when you hear the word of God like you're hearing right now, your spirit agrees with what you're hearing because of the personified spirit of God, the spirit of truth that's on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. And, and, and when you talk about power, power. I, I know people think that, oh, well, I have to do this, this, and this to get the power and the results. And, and I, it's what I have to do. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit working and leading will get you to the point of power. Hallelujah. And, now, in Second Corinthians, I mean, First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4, uh, Paul was saying something that was, that was so powerful for all of us as believers. But he said that, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Uh, so it's not me coming to you saying anything fancy that's yeah, going to get some yeah. results. Mm -hmm. But it's this. This is what Paul says here. He says, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Yes. It's, you're not going to have the Holy Spirit and not have the power that's that right. comes with it. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here to perform miracles yes. like Jesus did yes. when he was here. Because he's taking Jesus' place. Yes. So all we have to do as believers uh, is yield to his leading. Yield to his leading. He's going to lead you, like like in Mark six, uh, Mark chapter 16, at the end of that chapter, Jesus talked about uh, healing the sick, yeah. raising the dead. Yeah. You can drink any deadly thing, it will not harm you. That's All right. that's based off the Holy, the Holy Spirit, his role in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. And without that, him doing his role in our life, we're not going to get anywhere. Hallelujah. Absolutely. <laughs> you, can't get, you can't talk about the Holy Ghost and not get excited. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost on the inside of you get excited when you begin to talk. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Now, I just got to ask this. So, so basically, we're talking about... Um, what is the Holy Spirit? Now, you know, y'all got to help me out. <laughs> you got to help me out. Now, basically, now, see, I used to see people, you know, shouting. Yeah. You know, we've all seen people shout yeah. around and everything. And, you know, nothing against that, you know, that's that's fine. But I, I figured, you know, that's, I hear people say today, that, like I used to say, they got the Holy Ghost today. You know, five people got the Holy Ghost, you know. So, yeah. basically, we're talking about what is the Holy Ghost. So, you mean just jumping around and doing that, that's, that, that's not per se... The Holy Ghost, that's not what, you know, I can't say if I shout around and I, you know, I have a, that means I got the Holy Ghost? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you know, the Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit, it, 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 all, it, when, we, when we look at the Word of God, when we, when we read the Word of God and we see how the Holy Spirit function and work in the Word of God, what comes to mind right away is when Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, right. but such that I have. Rise up and walk. We saw the, pure, uh, the, the power of God. When Paul was pe preaching in Lystra and, and there was a man that was listening to him and Paul perceived that the man had, 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 had faith to be healed and Paul said, right, you know, get up. Told the man to get up. The man got up. And so, you know, those are, those are displays of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes, you, you, know, you know, people are overcome with such great emotion. And, uh, and and I would dare not say that that the Holy Spirit has has nothing to do with that. Right, right. It could be the, the, the part of being convicted by the word that's being preached, yeah. and the Holy Spirit could convict them, you know. And um, and people act and respond differently, yeah. you know, to certain things. Right. And and we all often respond based on our maturity level, okay. you know, okay. whatever your spiritual maturity level is. But the Holy Spirit is much more than a physical. A display, a physical uh, outburst. The Holy Spirit is power. And it is the Holy Spirit that we need today to be able to begin to turn things around. You know, when, when Pastor Corey just read a, in, in, from uh, the book of Mark, how Jesus has given us power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, that is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, just touch him. Just touch him. But he can't do it without us. He can't do anything without us. He needs us to be able to lay our hands. He Amen. needs us to be able to speak Amen. and command and to call those things that are not Amen. as though they were. That's the Holy right. Spirit is, is just power. Amen. And you've got to receive the Holy Spirit. You've got to believe the Holy Spirit just like you believe there's a God. You believe there's a Jesus. You have got to believe the Holy Spirit the exact same way. For the Bible, it said the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Amen. Are one. And you know, if you're not believing that the Holy Spirit is here right now handling the affairs of the church, yes. it's the Holy Spirit's role. Amen. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. God is, is supreme, but the Holy Spirit is here now interceding for us, helping us, and guiding us. Amen. Amen. And even going back to uh, John chapter 14, uh, over in verse 26, uh, Jesus tells us that 
but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yes. whom the Father will send. Yes. Now, we have to realize the Holy Spirit was with God and Jesus from the very beginning. Ooh, Even in Genesis, it talks about the Holy Spirit moving about the face of the earth. Yeah. Just going, because the Holy Spirit was there. there. So he's able to teach us That's God's right. mind because he's been there. But it goes on to say in verse 26, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Yeah. Man. He will teach you all. So how can we learn? Like, we can't even read the Bible without the Holy without Spirit's help. Because he's, he's the only one person. He's the yeah, only person. That's right. Because he is a person. He's the only person that can teach us all things. All so things. That, that moment, even, even going as far as to say when, when people want to give up, they say, well, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't serve this. I can't even serve anymore because yeah. I'm tired. The Holy Spirit is the one that will reignite you That's to right. want to keep going further That's right. and not give up. That's right. Amen. I tell you, if you operate by leading up the Holy Spirit, man, sometimes you'll find yourself you won't get a sign. Yeah. You you'll be able to go a little further you. because that, that Holy Spirit is is, is, is all-knowing. It's, it's a perfect – I mean, we know God is perfect. He's the only man that's perfect, the only, only in one God. But the leading of the Holy Spirit, if you're walking in the Holy Spirit – you're walking perfectly. Yeah. You know, that's what this word and, and instructs us to do, to be led by this spirit. That's right. So that's how our life changed. I mean, even when you think about, we were talking about prayer. We had, a, you know, awesome prayer uh, just happened uh, last month. Yeah. And um, even being led to pray. Right. Let the spirit lead you who to pray for. That's right. If, something, if, if you in sync with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit drops a person in your mind, you may have all with that person, but the Holy Spirit may drop them in there for you to pray. That's right. So the very thing that you may be getting mad with yeah. may be your opportunity to pray for that That's person right. by the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Even in Romans 8, 26, it says the Spirit itself, you know, help at our infirmities. You know, for we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit gives us an utterance. Amen. You know, praise God. You know, so, you know, we're talking about the Holy Spirit today. Why the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? What well, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is the comforter that Jesus himself prayed for. That's right. He prayed for that we would receive this comforter, that when he left, that he would leave a comforter Amen. that would comfort us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah. for sending the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. the comforter. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has a ministry. Amen. And the Holy Spirit ministers through us and Amen. ministers to us, Amen. you know, to God be the glory. So, you know, just receiving God, is that enough? Is just receiving salvation, it's enough because it's, you know, the Bible says if you would believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Amen. But to do the work of God, to do the work, to serve God, and to, and as Jesus did, the Holy Spirit has to be upon you. Amen. As Pastor Corey said, you know, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus did no miracles. He didn't feed anybody. He didn't, you know, turn two fish or five barley loaves. He didn't do anything with anything prior to the Holy Spirit right. coming up on him. Right. It was after the Holy Spirit came up on Jesus, Amen. Amen. when he came up out of the water, Holy Spirit descended up on him, and it was then that Jesus' ministry started. Amen. And a, a lot of people say, well, you know, Jesus could have did it, did it without the Holy Spirit. Jesus would have never done it without the Holy Spirit because Jesus was in the form of the, he was the Son of God, yet he was the Son of Man. So as the son of man, he wouldn't do anything in this earth, amen, that would that would that you and I couldn't do. Amen. So if he needed the Holy Spirit, you and I need the Holy Spirit. Over here in the book of Acts, the uh, eighth chapter, amen. Acts chapter eight, verses five, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. Here it is, you know, Philip goes down to Samaria, he preaches Jesus Christ, and the whole city receives Jesus. Everybody there is receiving Jesus Christ. Wow. And the city is joyful. It reminds us, just like when our children come to Christ Jesus and they receive him as their Lord and Savior, how excited are you as a parent, right. as a grandparent, when your child comes to Jesus? And that's what Philip did. Philip experienced that. Then it goes down to the, to the 12th verse. It says, but when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Not only did they believe, Philip, but they were all baptized, men and women. Right. They were all baptized. And then it goes on in that 14th verse, it says, Now when the apostles, which were in Jerusalem, at Jerusalem heard that the Samaritans 
had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And, and, and for yet he was not fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, here, here, here's the scene. They had received Jesus Christ. Amen. They had received of the word of God. They were all baptized. Right. And, and Peter and John knew, say, hey, these folks in Samaria, man, Philip has gone there and did a mighty work. And the people have been saved, and the people have come to Jesus. But they knew that in order for the people to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, come on. They needed the Holy Ghost. That's right. The first thing that happened to Jesus, when Jesus came up out of the water, he went into the wilderness, and right after that, he was tempted of the devil. That's right. And I tell you, without the Holy Ghost, the devil will run you ragged. Amen. 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 I got more I want to say, but I got to give you brothers time to say something. But <laughs> well, what, you, what you're saying is so powerful. That's what I got, I got uh, wrapped up in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start talking about, like you said, you start talking about the Holy Spirit. It just, your spirit is drawn to that. That's right. And, and, and the Holy Spirit is there to, to help you come back when the devil's throwing you away. Yeah. Like, the Holy Spirit, he's even in the simple things. Yeah. Like, I'm going, like, Holy Spirit, should I do this? Yeah. Should I go here? Yeah. Should I spend this? Should yeah. I, how should I approach my, my husband, my wife, or my child? Right, or right. What should I say? The Holy Spirit can help us. He said, the Bible says he'll teach us all things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what's so powerful yeah. about the Holy Spirit's role in our life. But you think about the adversary attacking and, and coming up against us. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to bring, guess what? The word right back That's to your right. remembrance so you can fight. That's right. He's not going to leave you. He's Amen. not going to leave you confident. So you have to be comforted by the Holy Ghost. And that's he's going to fulfill his role. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Because we were talking about uh, a couple sessions ago about uh, the spiritual walk. Yeah. You know, so this spiritual walk, you need the Holy Spirit. You know, that, that's that's right. what you need that's to fight right. this spiritual walk. Yeah. You can't fight it with flesh. You know, that, that spirit is just going to lead you perfectly to your next step. You know, it reminds me of discipling, man, how we have to be disciples. God Amen. called us to be disciples. Amen. And that means sometimes you will go and spin your wheel discipling somebody, you know, or thank you discipling yeah. somebody, and that person ain't even ready. That's right. You know, but if you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, who should I disciple? I have a heart to disciple somebody. That's the right. Holy Spirit will lead you that's right. to the person. And that will grow the kingdom, that's grow right. the church. That's right. And that's what we want. We want the church to grow, not just abound in grace, but the church. That's it's right. only one church. And I'm part of that church, and I know we all are. And that's the church that we want to grow. Yeah. So by the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will show you, go disciple that person. Yeah. They are right. ready. Right. Yeah. That yeah. person is ready. Go get them. That's right. That's right. And, and that's the trust. And that's the belief that we have in God and in the Holy Spirit. See, when you know that there is a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is a person and that it's the Spirit of God and that and, and then you begin to trust that and you begin to believe that and you say, I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive you into my life. Lead me and guide me. Show me these things. You know, it reminds me of, of in the Old Covenant when Moses would have them to set up the, uh, the, the tabernacle. Then the, uh, there was an outer court. And then there was a, a, a holy place and a holy of holy places. Well, in the holy place, there was a candle, uh, a candle stand with seven uh, of, of candles. Okay. And, and it was, of course, it was bread in there. And it was uh, a place for uh, incense, you know, to praise God. Well, if the candles didn't have oil in them, yeah. it would be dark in there. That's right. And the priests would not be able to see. That's right. The only thing that gave that area light is the candles which represents the Holy Spirit. Without the, without the Holy Spirit, we have no light in this dark world. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to respond. But the Holy Spirit is a light. Amen. Is a light. And, the, it, you know, the priest would be bumping into things. Right. And we would be bumping into things as well if we didn't know. And that's what Peter and John knew. Peter and John knew these people have been saved. Maybe you've been saved, but you haven't received the Holy Spirit. You haven't embraced the Holy Spirit. You haven't even acknowledged the Holy Spirit. And, you, and, and you're saying, well, you know, I heard something today that I hadn't heard before. It's nothing strange. It's nothing spooky about the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the living God. Amen. It's the spirit of God. And we embrace them. You know, I say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, show me what to do here. Holy Spirit, tell me what to do here. You know, you, you can always talk to the Holy Spirit because he's here with you. Amen. And, 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 and God has made this life so easy uh, for us. Thank you. And we, we, we complicated 
by overthinking yeah. and trying to figure things out on yeah. our own. That's right. But we were never designed to, to, do, to do that. That's right. God had Jesus here at the time he was here. Yeah. The disciples had it easy because all they had to do was go and ask Jesus and depend right. on Jesus. That's right. When Jesus left, Man. they Woo. sent the Holy Ghost. Man, that's good. So, so when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, all we good. have to do is go and say, well, Holy Spirit, we can ask him. We don't have to figure anything out that's right. because we can think through the very mind of Christ yes. through the Holy Spirit's leading. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I, I think about the verse uh, over there when it talks about uh, being hard for a rich man to make it in, oh, you know. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it makes me think, you know, why would you be hard for a rich man? But I think about a rich man has so much money that they can go out and buy whatever they want to yeah. buy. Yeah. They can go buy whatever car they want to buy, whatever house and whatever neighborhood. Yeah. But you think about this. You put the leading of the Holy Spirit on that thing. The Holy Spirit says, Buy a house in this neighborhood. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows it's somebody in that neighborhood that needs to hear about Jesus. That's right. The Holy Spirit says, go buy a car on this lot. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows you're going to run into somebody on that lot. Or when you get in that car and pull off, somebody's going to see you. That's that's right. gonna, you're going to be able to disciple them. Amen. That shows you, man, that the importance. I mean, if, if you haven't, just like you were saying, if you haven't really thought much about the Holy Spirit, hadn't asked about the Holy Spirit, hadn't talked about the Holy Spirit, you may not know much about the Holy Spirit. And it's time now to say, what is it about this Holy Spirit? Yeah. I need this Holy Spirit because yeah. it's God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's a trinity. You can't have one without the other. That's right. You know, you need all three for this thing to work properly. That's right. And everything that has power in this book, everything that God has given us that has power, in this book, the devil has deceived us on. Amen. Everything that has power, the devil has 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 has, has caused confusion, yeah. not only among individuals but among denominations. Yeah, that's right. He, he's that's caused right. a whole bunch of confusion about the Holy Spirit because he knows that if you ever get a hold to the Holy Ghost, if you ever receive the Holy Spirit. Ow. You'll know who you are. Amen. You'll walk in authority. Amen. You'll walk in power. You'll walk in confidence, Amen. not of yourself, but of the word of God, assurance. You'll hear from God. It's a direct line. You'll never have a, a dial tone. You'll never have a, the phone is always open, amen. Right. The line is always right. open, right. and you're always hearing from God. And you respect the person of the Holy Ghost. You respect the spirit that God has given us. And when that spirit is up on you, you have power. I tell you, you Amen. have power to lay hands on your children, Amen. and they Amen. shall recover. You have power to lay hands on your husband, lay hands on your sick relatives, and you do it in the name of Jesus, and you know you, you're laying those hands because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the power and the authority Amen. to do it, given right. to you. That's the power of God. You have the power to know things that, you're, that you don't even know. You have the ability to know things. And people think you're so smart and you, you got so much knowledge because you, you just know things. Well, Amen. it's the Holy Spirit that's bringing these things to your remembrance. Amen. And, and, the, and the Holy Spirit, uh, it's not going to ever overtake us. No. Mm -hmm. he, he's that still, small voice yes. that's speaking. And, and, and when you, you know he's speaking, because a lot of people are like, well, how do I know it's the Holy Ghost? Because what the Holy Spirit says is always going to line up right. with what the Word of God says. Right. 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 It, that's how you know. Like, if you want to prove that it's the Holy Ghost, get your Word and line it up that's with right. what, the, what you're hearing. Because we know the devil wants to talk to us, too, and he's not going to overtake us. Amen. But we have to know, once you get into practice of listening to the Holy Spirit, that relationship and bond is up. Yeah. You'll know exactly what his voice sounds like. Amen, yeah. amen. And, and back to staying in that Word, man, the more you in that Word, the more you eat, and eat and eat up and meditate on that word. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, you'll know it'll agree with your spirit. Yeah. You'll say, man, that's the Holy Spirit that's telling right. me to do that. That's, that's the Holy right. Spirit. I mean, I lost my keys, man. Yeah. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, you know, and I can only say, Holy Spirit, help me find my keys yeah. because I have confidence that's right. in the Holy that's Spirit. Right. Because Amen. if I didn't have confidence, I would just hang my head and just be like, man, I'm telling you, I used to get mad, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what if I how was the guy leave? You know what I'm yeah. saying? But now with the, the leading of the Holy Spirit and me knowing about the Holy Spirit and now having confidence yeah. in the Holy Spirit, if I lose so much of my keys, yeah. Holy Spirit, help me find my keys. Yeah. I, I know you will. Yeah. I know you know what it is. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I leave my confidence there. And I tell you, I've always found my keys. Yeah. Amen. Why would Jesus pray for the Holy Spirit come on. Come on. to come and we don't need him? Mm -hmm. well, we do, if Jesus was here, we would flock around him, That's right. and we would be at his feet, listening to him, and 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 calling on him. 
And he says to us, I will not leave you comfortless, Amen. but I'm going to send you another comfort. Praise God. That means it's important. Amen. That means it's something that you need. It's something that I need. We're here at Abounding Grace Ministries. Have faith in God. Video chat. You're listening to on Facebook. And we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish we had more time uh, to talk about it because the Holy Spirit is a topic that we can keep talking about over Amen. and over and Amen. over and over again. But I tell you, the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. That's right. If you're hungry and thirsty for the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter that we're about to go off. You can begin to seek Amen. the Holy Spirit. You can That's begin right. to seek a relationship with God. Seek to know him even greater. Amen. And I tell you, you seek, you'll find. Amen. The Bible says, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Well, today, uh, I want to share this, this book, Have Faith. Have you received since you believe? It's a book I wrote. It's really a testimony, a uh, book that I wrote about eight years ago. And I just uh, just actually published it this year because after receiving the Holy Spirit, after receiving and believing the Holy Spirit, it, it simply changed my life and it changed the ministry that God had assigned me. Because there's no power, there's no work without the Holy Spirit. You can order this book today. Um, you can uh, I have a website, BH Ministries 12 BH Ministries shop. I don't even remember remember it. I'm so full of the Holy Spirit. Go to my go to my page, my Facebook page, and you'll see this uh, how to order this book. And I'm telling you, it will bless your life. It will bless your life. Uh, message me, and we'll tell you how to order this book. It's only um, $10.99, and it will certainly bless you. I'm not trying to sell this as a product, but I'm telling you, you can see you cannot even read this book. And seek God in His Word. That's right. Just seek Him in this Word, and and I tell you what, God will will the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Embrace the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit Amen. today. Amen. Receive the Holy Spirit, and your life will change. Your family will change. Everything about you will change. Well, I'm here with Pastor Corey Wilkins and Minister uh, DeAndre Sanders. Amen. They're here with us today. And praise God for these brothers. It's so good to be with iron that sharpens iron. Right, you know, right. uh, God, you find yourself. Around people that you can sharpen one another. Amen. You know, I, I pastor this church, but man, listen, I, we, either one of these brothers can pastor the church. Amen. Because because we we have the same God. We're dependent on the same God. Amen. We're dependent on the same Spirit. You know, right. and and we just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Well, uh, to God be the glory. We pray that you took time to uh, to watch this. Once we go off, invite your friends and share this share this message. Uh, with someone Amen. that you know will bless them. If you have any questions, you can always message us. You know, message either one. Either one of us will be more than happy to um, uh, answer your questions. Pastor Corey, can you play us out? Yes, sir. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your word, Father. Yes, we thank you that your word is, is powerful all by itself. Yes, we thank you, Father, that your word is, is sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes, we thank you, Father, that even those that are watching on today, I thank that those that have a, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Yes, thank you that those who are searching for the Holy Ghost, they will be filled. Yes, they will receive on today yes, in the name in of the Jesus. Name of thank you that they won't be weary and well-doing. They won't yes. faint, but they'll continue to seek your face and seek the, the, the filling of your spirit yes, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus. even today this has ignited someone to, to go out and want to let the Holy Spirit lead. Lord, on a daily basis in Jesus' name. Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the word has drawn people closer to you yes, and their Lord. eyes aren't on us, they're on you now, on Father you, God. Everything we do is, is, is a direct reflection of you, yes, Father Lord. God. Yes, in the name Lord. of Jesus, that you receive all glory from us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit's work yes, in the Lord. lives of those who tune in on tonight, Father, that they'll spread the gospel of Jesus Christ yes, and Lord. power will be released yes, through Lord. what they say Absolutely. and through what they do in yes, the name of Jesus because the Holy Spirit will lead and guide them. We thank you and we praise you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, join us next Monday at 7.30 to 8 o'clock um, for Have Faith in God video chat, chat. Be blessed. We'll see you the next time. Amen.